keep in mind this is going over the holiday season so there were kind of limited releases this month um very small number um we had some security updates with cves we had the open office issue we had some additional uh, chrome updates firefox thunderbird and wireshark had some releases this month um between patch tuesdays rather um, we did have um, security updates without CVEs. Again, these are those applications that the vendors say it's a security update, but there aren't any specific CVEs reported associated with those. And of course, we have a handful of non-security updates as well, where general performance enhancements or things like that. Um, listing out some of the windows with third-party CVE information, in case you're interested, we include them here. Um, we had, like I said, the versions of Chrome that were released, uh, OpenOffice. You can see that a large Firefox update um, 121 came out. Uh, this was on released on 1219, addressing 18 vulnerabilities. So you should obviously make sure you're up to date with the latest version of Firefox, but this one came out mid-month. Uh, and then we had the Wireshark updates. They actually updated uh, several versions of Wireshark. Um, 3.6, they updated uh, 4.0 and 4.2 as well. So if you're running Wireshark in your environment, uh, as part of a discovery tool, uh, anal analysis tool, make sure that you have that updated. And we had a Thunderbird update as well, addressing um, 11 vulnerabilities this month. On the Apple side, um, we had one Apple Sonoma update, um, the Chrome update and Firefox. Of course, these carry over. Um, they have both the Windows and the Mac versions. They do them all simultaneously, of course. Um, we didn't have any security updates without CVEs this month, and we had a lot of non-security updates as well. Um, this was the Sonoma update, 14.2.1, uh, fixed one vulnerability. Um, on the third-party side, these are the Chrome updates. Again, um, same ones that you saw on the uh, Windows side showed up here as well. We had a Firefox update for the same 18 vulnerabilities, the ESR version for 11. And of course, on the uh, Apple side as well, Microsoft does release their version of Edge. Um, if you're running that on your Mac OS devices, uh, there were a couple of updates there as well. Uh, again, single vulnerabilities addressed there. And finally, Thunderbird had 11 vulnerabilities as well this month. This was on uh, back on the 19th, so right before the holidays. Again, kind of a light release of third party and Microsoft updates in between the holidays. Um, getting back on track, of course, we have our Patch Tuesday releases you need to deal with right now. Um, with that, Chris, I'll turn it back over to you on the Q&A side. Let's see what we got here. All right. So um, while Todd was going through that, I did go out and do a little bit more searching because a number of you all posted about uh, KB5034441. The Microsoft forum uh, discussions have been mediocre at best, unfortunately. Uh, they've been giving very plain answers and treating it as a edge case kind of thing, but Obviously, this is hitting a lot more people. I did find this article um, on Ask Woody. Um, so I'm going to give everybody time to uh, grab that, that article from here. Uh, but if you go and search for um, that particular uh, KB with that, that failure on Ask Woody, you're going to find this article from Susan Bradley. So for those of you who are not aware, Susan is... Uh, she took over a lot of the um, activities on Ask Woody as Woody retired, and she's also the moderator of patchmanagement.org. So patchmanagement.org, if you're not familiar with it, it is a community focused specifically on the topic of patch management related challenges. She's very knowledgeable, very well connected in that community and with um, some experts over on the Microsoft side and tends to get to really good answers better than anybody I've, I've seen. Um, so if she's got an answer for this, chances are this is going to be the best you're going to find out there. Um, I know a couple of you uh, were, were asking about this one. This is the article I would take a look at first. Now, what it looks like is happening is basically if your Windows 10 machines are a little bit older and they were set up with uh, non-optimal partition sizes is, is how she refers to it. Um, but basically, this particular update requires a large enough amount of space to be able to do the um, WinRE um, backup, or it's going to fail to 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 run the install. So that's that's in most cases where people are running into issues. She is talking about doing this from an approach of either blocking it, or if you are where uh, in a situation where you need to do this. She gives some details here on um, 
how to try to approach this. She doesn't recommend installing the updates at the moment. That's her guidance. If you're um, if you're not running BitLocker, she would she's suggesting to hide the update. If you do want to install it, um, she's going to be apparently doing a video on it with necessary next steps. So I would say take a look at this and watch for her additional updates around that as she finds a way to better manage that. Um, so best answer I've found on that issue right now. Um, so again, uh, see if you can uh, get to that article there. All right, there were, let's see. Oh, somebody was saying they're seeing it on server 2022 as well. Um, so far, I've only seen articles relating to the Windows 10 failure error. So um, don't have any more details on that, but uh, she might have more details for a server, if not now, possibly in the, the near future. Um, there were a few people asking about, uh, we did have a vulnerability that was resolved for um, Endpoint Manager. Um, let me pull up the article for it here. So EPM, for those of you on EPM, there was a CVE that was reported, um, not actively being exploited at this time, but it is a 9.6 uh, criticality. The details about that advisory are available on the community and uh, um, basically the article on getting your EPM instance up to date. Um, so that is the best source of information there um, on that update. I know there was a question around will 2021 be getting that? Um, no, uh, 2021 um, had its final update prior to the CVE being discovered. Um, so they, the if you are on 2021, uh, you would need to update to 2022 um, to be able to get this vulnerability resolved. Uh, so those are the questions that I've, I've normally uh, seen on that. Uh, I will, let me see if I can get this here. For those who asked me about it, I'm shooting you the KB article for that. I'll, I'll take a look and make sure I got to everybody else who asked that question as well. But uh, that's the details about that one.